Hello, my friends. Mr. Nomad Ben here. So, yes, we're going to stop by McDonald's real quickly because I am actually really hungry. As you can see, the camera is shivering a little bit because it is a little chilly outside as I'm filming this. But when I'm getting really hungry, I start to shiver a little bit because I get the shiver hungers. So, I don't know if that's really a real thing. But I found out that McDonald's actually has a... Uh, Two new sauces that's a limited of a time called the sweet and spicy jam and the mambo sauce. So I really want to try that kind of sauce. I'm going to order some chicken nuggies. And yes, I said chicken nuggies. So we'll order some chicken nuggies, try these sauces, they'll review them for you guys. And then we're going to make our way over to the just a little bit of the most haunted cemeteries in the Dalton, Georgia in the area. Then we'll make our way to historic downtown Dalton, Georgia to uh, see what's going on for any updates that I would like to show off to you guys. And I'm inviting you to come with me. So let's go ahead and uh, try these new sauces at McDonald's. And here we go. Tell us all about where you've been, Nomad Ben. Tell us all about the finer points of living in your traveling. Food, beer, history, nature, quest. Every corner of the song to the great Midwest. Tell us all about where you've been, Nomad Ben. And here we are, my friends, outside of McDonald's off of Cleveland Highway, a place that needs no introduction. And we're going to make our way inside, and we're going to try these sauces with the chicken nuggies, sweet and spicy jam, in the mambo sauce. So let's do this. So let's go ahead and take advantage of the future of technology here. Do the make the nugget and meals here. Let's do the alongside with the drink. And yes, yeah, so we're going to do some mambo sauce and the sweet and spicy. And we'll definitely have a Coke to go with it. Let's do a medium Coke. And the order looks about right. Let's do this. And here we are, my friends. We got ourselves the chicken nuggets and the mambo and the sweet and spicy jam sauce. Little fries. I'm not going to review the burger, but we're going to focus on this particular item. So let me eat this first. We're gonna try this. Alrighty, friends, let's go ahead and try these new sauces just for a minute of time here in McDonald's. We're gonna start out with the mambo sauce. I don't know what to expect. I have only heard of this stuff from the commercials and um, other influencers have talked about this. So let me go ahead and try the mambo sauce. I'm very excited about this. Ooh, it has a very spicy smell to it. I think I'm going to like the sauce. I can just really smell. I think I'm really going to enjoy this. All right. Look at what it looks like up front. Mmm. Ooh. I like this sauce a lot. It's a very sweet beginning. But as you eat it, it starts getting a little hot. Wow. This sauce is just very addicting. I'm worried I'm gonna eat all my nuggets just for the mambo sauce. Well, I gotta try this one next, but mm, this sauce is so good. All right, next we we'll do the sweet and spicy jam sauce. I don't know if I'm ever gonna think better than that mambo sauce. Okay. If you guys don't know what jam is, it's basically jelly, so more of a jelly-based sauce. But like the mambo sauce had a little bit of a sweet start, but then it had a very spicy finish. So I'm not really sure what truly to expect. Of course, I have an idea what it could be. You know how spicy, sweet and spicy sauces are. So um, I'm still feeling the heat from the mambo sauces. I'm still talking to y'all. Uh, maybe a little more sip of a Coke. A little concoction of part Coke and uh, orange soda. Mm. All right, let's try that the jam. Okay. You know what look in here? Definitely a jam. All right, cheers. Mm. That's good. Okay, so it has a little slight kick to it. But it's more sweet than it is spicy, but it definitely has a little bit of heat to it. 
but not as much as the mambo. The mambo, I'm really liking the mambo. The mambo is really good on the chicken. And this is good with the nuggets too, don't get me wrong. But I gotta tell you, what would actually do very well with this is like, you're like a biscuit, like a breakfast biscuit. Like a sausage egg and cheese biscuit or chicken biscuit. I think it'd be good for, this is a good breakfast kind of uh, sauce for you guys. Well, this is very good. But uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I think I like the mambo just slightly better. But the, um, I think it's pretty equal of how they are. But I guess considering that it's the mood of things right now, I'll stick with the mambo is my favorite out of the two. But I, if I ever uh, you're gonna have bre uh, McDonald's again if it for breakfast within the next week or two, I'm probably gonna request the sweet spicy jam to go with my breakfast sandwich. Well, when the bag is full, that means I was very satisfied with this meal. Loved both sauces, and I hope McDonald's puts them on the permanent menu. Get them all you can. It's a limited time only. Well, the hunger shivers are gone. I got food in my belly. That was a very satisfying meal. I, I love those sauces a lot. So why don't we go ahead and make our way over to the Haunted Miller Cemetery here in Dalton. It's, it's like in between Dalton and Chatsworth. It's just like kind of the border of the two towns. Let's make our way over there and there's some pretty interesting stories over there. And uh, I just want to say uh, I had to take some content from my friend Shadows Past who's into cemeteries. So I'm going to do my version of the telling of it. So let's go. And here we are, my friends. We have made it to one of the most haunted cemeteries in Dalton, Georgia, inside the small community of Dawnville. So basically a small town within a small town, but more of a community in Dalton. So this is the Miller Cemetery, and there is an urban legend about this place, or a spooky tale, which I'll talk about in a second. I, with the help of my friend uh, Frank from Shadows Past, uh, I'm piggybacking a little bit from his story that he told about this place. So I'm going to kind of tell um, the same story from his channel. But there's something I also discovered about these two trees right here off of another content creator. I believe it's Southern Bell Paranormals. Yeah, I'll leave the description below on both uh, both content creators in my description uh, in the video. But we're going to talk about one of the legends first, then I'll talk about the next one. The first legend, we're going to talk about the Lady in White. So, uh, clearly that's the family cemetery of the Millers over here. But uh, about uh, a little over a hundred and something years ago, there was like a farmhouse down that direction. And uh, with the... Uh, with that farmhouse over there, clearly, we have a uh, community over there. But the, la the lady in white, the, so the lady in white is uh, rumored that she comes out, uh, you see her clearly on a full moon around this part, right off of Mark Brown Road in Dawnville, Dalton, Georgia. So we got a whole field, field of corn over here, but it's uh, deemed that she would actually walk between the fields and the farm area into the cemetery or sometimes she'll walk from the cemetery back into the fields. But people have claimed they have found her uh, during, uh, again, during the full moons or just while they're on their way home from work and whatnot at nighttime. So uh, we don't know exactly how the Lady in White died. It is possible that she's just a spirit that wasn't possibly buried correctly in the cemetery here or is it perhaps she was murdered. But, again, these are just tales and urban legends, and I'm going off of what my friend said on his channel. But I like to think it's got to be one of the two things, because we learned from the, the wandering spirits in downtown Ringgold of Clem, uh, William, and Sarah. They were not properly buried, hence is why their spirits were um, lingering downtown Ringgold. So, why Lady in White? Why was the Lady in White... You know, still linger to this day between the farmhouse and the cemetery here. Who knows? But I like to think that's probably one of the two reasons of improper burial or murder. So here's the names of some of the people that were buried here. George R. Mitchell, in 1862, died in 1917. And we got Pa Webb buried in 1924. So we got some the burials right here. Clearly we could kind of see the outline. I bet you if I had a shovel, could probably hit like maybe an old casket or something. Who knows? Well, I'm not gonna do that. 
Got Rosie Jantz, 1845 to 1920. So mother. Clara Webb, July of 1882 to 1923. And then we got one here. Janine Mitchell, 1873 to 1902. Well, it looks like we got some more burials over here. Looks like more of a fresh one over there. That's more of an updated stone than some of these here. We'll kind of make our way over there in a minute. And again, these are family tombstones. So, again, when you want to visit a grave, please respect the dead and respect cemeteries regardless of how you felt about the person or what side of the civil war they fought on you want to respect the dead all right kind of mosey around here the J.R. Miller right here I can't really read uh, 1823 to 1870 it looks like 1878 so we got one of the family Millers over here got another Miller over there uh, J.R. Miller born in 1833 to 1906 I was kind of walking around here he definitely has a little bit of a creepy vibe here that is for sure then another Miller husband and wife right here Joseph B. and Margaret E. Joseph was born in 1870, died in 1938. And Margaret E., 1880 to 1932. So it looks like that this particular cemetery is still used today because we actually got an updated one over here for one of the Miller family members. We got the most recently deceased nine years ago, a little over nine years ago, for Dorothy B. Miller, September 4th, 2014, she passed. Died, uh, born in 1922. I believe that's her husband right there, John R., born in 1915, died in 1967. find out who this is over here okay so I had a feeling that this one was definitely most recent to tell by the way the stone is made here and how clean it is compared to the other family stones over here so got the name of Blay Block so Friedel L Frida not Friedel <laughs> even though it's come I say that Died in 2015, born in 1930, and there's Jack, 1923 to 2018. And also, Mr. Jack, thank you for your service, serving us in serving your country and during World War II. And then we got Joseph Belay Black, 1926 to 2018. So probably the most up-to-date family right here. But they say that the lady in white, like I said, she would come here and hang here or throughout the cemetery. And she'll make her way back to the barn house areas over there or vice versa. She just comes here or she goes back over there. But how did she die? I don't know. If you guys have uh, watched my channel or watched my friend Shadow Pass channel, and you have any idea how she died or what caused the legend or the spooky story about her, drop in the comments below so I can learn more about this. Uh, 
tale or legend about Dalton, Georgia. Because there's a lot of good spooky tales within our town. But there's still plenty of space for future burials for the family here. Hearing a little more steps. Well, more, uh, more gunshots. I think they're probably practicing their shooting. Welcome to the south, right? All right. So let's talk about these trees right here. That tree and this tree right here. So this story I'm about to bring up right now, I found this on a TikTok from the content creator Southern Bells Paranormal. Uh, so they said they believe that these trees are actual portals. So the portals have opened up in the Miller Cemetery. And it's kind of ironic of how the, these trees are like that. Uh, I would think it's more of lightning strikes, as you can see, because there's definitely some burnt holes right here, something burning right there. That's some, what I think it is, but I'm no botanist or uh, plant scientist. So that's one opening right here. So possible of a lightning strike, or I believe it could be a portal. But over here, this is clear evidence it has to be a lightning strike that happened a long time ago. I'm gonna look at closer here. Look how deep this actually got right here. Looks like someone likes to use that as by light cans. Uh, recycling. <laughs> So look, that is a big, deep cut right here. All right, I'm going to make my way over here. We're not going to go into the fields. But I'm going to go turn around over here, and we'll kind of get a different kind of point of view. Kind of look at this direction. So it's just kind of ironic. It's just so interesting to kind of have the thought. If they believe that these are portals that opened up here in the cemetery. And then we got a lady in white that kind of goes back and forth. Like, that is uh, a lot to wrap your mind around for some local urban legends or tales or spooks that have happened here in Dalton. But again, accordingly to fellow content creators of what I've heard or what I've researched, Very similar to the show Stranger Things, of open portals to different dimensions or different worlds that could infiltrate our reality in our world. But this is so ironic, just are two sides like that. Wow. Sometimes I forget that cemetery content is actually amazing content. Um, I like my friend uh, Shadows Pass. He's been doing the cemetery content for a very long time now. You can learn a lot from him and things like local, like little spooks or legends, or just learn about the people that are buried in their stories out there. And uh, another uh, cemetery content creator. I'm not sure if he's making new videos or not. I haven't watched his stuff in quite some time. But I hope to meet him one day. He seems like a very awesome gentleman. His name is Memories with Steve. He doesn't necessarily focus on like the spooky or urban legend tales. He focuses more on the burial sites of very famous or well-known people. So his idea is if you like cemetery content. So um, I would like to end the vlog for one more tale that's going to take place in downtown Dalton. I believe I shared the tale before on my channel, but I will share it again. And then uh, we'll just kind of see what's going on in downtown for like some of the updates that are happening. There's a couple, let's check out the carpentry because the, the progress of that building is going well. And there's another building that's been getting a remodel. And then we'll we'll take it take it over from here. So yeah, so I'm heading back, so I'm heading back into downtown Dalton right now. But I had to pull off and show off this little display at Rogers Auto Truck Parts and Used Cars. Looks like a really nice display of the Haunted Mansion people, Jack Skellington, and I believe that's Oogie Boogie of the Nightmare Before Christmas. So he's the Haunted Mansion guys probably. We got some Christmas decorations up, and we got a big skeleton. And we got a dead witch without her hat. Very scary. Then we got some more Christmas decorations up over here of the Nativity and Penguins. Also, just a shout out Veterans Day Road Race coming up. So, support your veterans, folks.
All right, let's get back to the vlog. All right, so we made it back to downtown Dalton right now. And to show off first is the Dalton Station. So this used to be, I believe, one of their budget uh, hotels that they had here. And there was actually a really cool old sign as well, which they tore it down. They had like a little German guy in the... Uh, and there was a little outfit that he had there, but it's now no longer in existence. But look at they're just remodeling the building itself. They renamed it Dalton Station. It just looks more cleaner and more crisp. They got a little more work left to do here. But we'll see how it looks, whenever that'll be. I'll keep you guys updated. I'm sure it's still gonna be like a hotel or some sort of extended living. Who knows what this will be. We'll keep an eye on it. And here's a little update of the future, the Dalton by Alta. So these are our apartment complexes coming off of Jones and Wall Street here in downtown Dalton. So you're looking to move? You may want to check out to see what the rent is. I'm sure it'll be in the uh, quadruple digits, but still looking for a place to live in this awesome little town. There'll be some more places to live. So what we got here, so something new that we have here, Wings and Things. This used to be an authentic drive through Mexican restaurant. Now it became a uh, chicken wing place and a little bit of everything. So if you're looking for something new to eat to support the small town of Dalton and small business, you might want to go here and eat. And uh, just from what I've been told, former workers of the butcher shop, the chop shop, Actually, uh, when they uh, get rid of the business to turn into a Mexican restaurant uh, off of Coiler Street, they've got together and started this place up. Uh, this is a future food review that we'll be going to one of these days, so can't wait to, can't wait to try it. So we got ourselves a double whammy of two new things here on the street here. We got the spa on Coiler by the Dalton Dermatology, and then there is the future Carpentry Hotel. Uh, happening both happening in this street here and um, the progress is looking good I believe the spa is open now but uh, the, we've got a little ways to go until the carpentry is open and we'll definitely keep an eye on the opening date for that hotel so my friends we're gonna end it right here in downtown Dalton off of Hamilton and Crawford Street and I actually had no idea there was like some kind of festival going on and I don't I'm sorry I don't know the name of the festival either but I wanted to end it on a decent vibe, but with all the happy music going on and all that, I I had to do this, this particular part in my car. So I believe I shared this story before on my channel a few years back, but I will share it again. This particular building I'm showing right here is actually a land, the landmark building, which I believe it was called the Dalton Hotel or Hotel Dalton back in the early 1920s. There was, um, it was actually rebuilt eventually because it was destroyed by a fire, but they rebuilt the building. So probably between the 50s or the 80s, there really was not really a particular date, but uh, the ghost hunter and author of the book Haunted Dalton, Georgia, I believe her name is Connie Hall, Connie Scott Hall, who used to do ghost tours around here, are uh, believed to be ghost tours, and I really wish she brought them back. But anyways, so uh, she talked to one of uh, the workers in the buildings that they believed it was it was a haunted building, and he the, the one of the workers said he uh, probably found out it was haunted, um, according to the two women that used to work there, but there was a woman who worked. So the story is that there was a, a guest in this built in the hotel at the time, before it became a, a, an IT building, an investment building. Is that um, there was a worker who used to work at the drive-in theater in Cherokee, the Cherokee drive-in theater, off of Cleveland Highway, the historic. Uh, drive-in theater that's no longer there it's been replaced by a bunch of businesses and plants we'll make our way over there one day but um, she was coming here in town to stay the night in this hotel and oh well, she decided to uh, end her life so they believe uh, her ghost still haunts the third floor to uh, to this day so um, I'll leave the a link in the description below where I saw the story. So they say that her spirit is still there on the third floor, and sometimes they say the they see the light flicker 
every once in a while so that's according to the haunted story so just something kind of a little spooky and all that craziness too about the landmark building is something kind of creepy and that my friends ends today's adventure as we tried the new sauces that are limited time only in mcdonald's and then we made our way in the donville dalton area to go check out the most haunted cemetery around the area of the miller family cemetery and learning about the lady in white and the two portals uh, that's opened up in the area <laughs> but take that with a grain of salt and learning about the new things happening in dalton and of course the tale about the lady of the landmark building so if you guys enjoyed this particular vlog you guys know what to do like subscribe you know the drill and as long as you are subscribed stay tuned for some new adventures happening uh in the channel um, I've been, this is a very busy fall, a very busy October for me in particular, just trying to give you guys some fresh and fun content. I just dropped my very first haunted experience at the Haunted Depot for la from last week's adventure, and it's still it's still going on as I dropped the vlog. It's got a couple more weeks left of their uh, the Haunted Depot event, so please go out and support the town of Ringgold, Georgia. They are, they worked hard for um, having this thing up to entertain the people in Northwest Georgia or anyone that comes by and visit. A lot of fun events, so I encourage you guys to go and check that place out as small towns that do watch my channel. To go out and support your neighboring small towns too, other than just going to Chattanooga or Atlanta. So if you're in the Northwest Georgia area and you're not far from Ringgold, you want to go out and support them. I got Chattanooga Comic Con coming about. So uh, if you guys like Star Wars and Futurama, Family Guy and all that good stuff, because I'm fans of all those franchises, they're coming. A lot of people who do the voices of like Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels and Futurama, all that stuff. They have their panels, guests and all that. I'll be documenting the whole week in there. Of course, I'll still bring forth some uh, maybe more content, more scary stories like this, uh, either in Chattanooga or here in Dalton or just locally up until the end of October. And then, like I said before, I'm just looking forward to what November brings. I might bring a little more haunts into November because I've been having such a busy October with content in my personal life. Um, I'm supposed to get together with my friend Shadows Past, who I've talked about on my channel. Me and him were going to do something on the Wink Theater. Um, I believe I shared a story about the Wink Theater, like, or at least a synopsis of the story. But me and him are going to team up and go check out the Wink Theater. Or not really go inside, but we'll definitely kind of do some excursions in the downtown about the Wink Theater eventually. That's probably going to be end of October or early November. i got to work out the details with him 100% on the scheduling. But we're doing a co-op on that. And of course, I got San Antonio, Texas, in uh, my road trip there. So wherever I stop, so I uh, got some Texas and road trip vlogs for you in the future. And of course, a mixture of that entering November and December, we got Christmas content. So um, it's my favorite kind of year. I love fall. I love Christmas. Um, I enjoy fall festivals and winter festivals. So this is like my kind of Super Bowl as a content creator. And I love doing this stuff. I love doing this for you guys. So, yes, my again, my friends, eat well and keep your mind walking. I'll see you guys in the next one.